today I'm going to talk about the USSR immigrants and during the 1920s and 30s. And the reason I'm going to talk about the USSR immigrants because during that time the USSR is a very new political power in the world. It's very different from the from the Western country because they are uh, they use mm, they are they are very different from the central government in Western countries and they have their own political problems. And, and during the times there is also the depression, the big depression during the world. And it makes people want to go to USSR to find a new life at there. And today I'm going to talk about two people who immigrate who immigrate to USSR. And both of them are American. The first one, Carl Rautio, he's a composer. He is Finnish and he moved to U.S. when he is young, and he he be he has been a minor at U.S. during the time he lived there. But during his uh, minor, he also finished his educated about mu music at their at the at their local school. And then in 1922, he went back to Korea, and which is now which at that time belongs to the USSR. And at at that time, he stayed in Korea. He made a lot of compositions and uh, he built he, the first musical score at Karelia. He's assumed as a very important composer of, of, of Karelia during the time. And the government, in order to memorize, memorize him, they built their own, uh, own museum for him in Karelia. And Korea is about near, is near the Finland and the northwest of USSR. It's very close to St. Petersburg. And uh, Atlanta, Korea is a small country and its government by its government is controlled by the central of USSR. And but the Korea is uh, is uh, about the about Korea is the Korea has most of the mines and uh, some factories factories at Korea and is some of the important place in USSR. And next one, I'm going to talk about Robert Robinson. He is an African American. He born in Jamaica, and he went to live with his mom in Cuba. After sometimes, uh, after sometimes, his father divorced with his mom. They moved to Detroit, in U.S., and he became a tool maker at Detroit. And in 1929. Uh, US and USSR uh, alcoholic manager come to Detroit and ask the company to send some skillful workers to go to USSR to help them uh, build up their life. And they offered a better life in there. They will give those workers who move to USSR a new house, a car, and a lot of more salaries. And, and Robert Robinson chose to choose to move to USSR because he, one is he want to earn more money to make his life more better and another reason is because it's during a big depression. He doesn't want to lose he is a, he was afraid of losing his job so he went to USSR in 1930s. And at, when he first moved to USSR he has been uh, alcoholic assassinated by two white workers at USSR. And as, as soon as uh, the two white workers are arrested, uh, the government moved him to another small, small company with other workers, and he, they used him as a symbol of the racist problems in America. And they, the government want to want to tell people in the world that uh, America has the problem of this racist problem, but they are not. They won't have any racist problem in USSR because they will deal with it. And at, but after 1932, uh, he want to went back to USA, but the government persuade him to stay here because he is a skillful worker at there. And so he re renewed the contract again and stay work. Uh, but after the Stalin being a successor, uh, those skillful workers, including Robert Robinson, cannot get back to America because of him. And, and 
started from there, he has undergo many he has undergo many events like the Germany invade USSR and the starvation and the Stalin's uh, Stalin's cleaning up about about his enemies and. At this time, he nearly starved to death because of the war. Because of the war, yes. And uh, and after the war, but be, yes, between the war, at about 1944, he actually earned a degree of engineering at at Stalingrad. But he received his diploma at around 1946. I think it's because of the war, so he get his diploma very lately. And after a war, he tried, he applied to went back to America many times, but it's always denied to, the government always denied him. And around 1974, the government finally agreed him to went to Uganda to have a trip or vacation at there. And he bought a wrong, wrong, wrong ticket to make him not so suspicious for the government. And when he arrived at the Uganda, the Uganda officers uh, helped him to talk with the USSR government and make him back to America after a few months. And he also got married at, uh, at Uganda with a local teacher at there. And after he went to, after he went back to US in 1974, he had wrote, him, wrote himself an autobiography. It's called Back on Red, My 44 Years Inside the Soviet Union. It's about his life in, yes, in Soviet Union. He is, and he went back to rest, he lived in Detroit, and after, and some years ago, he passed at there. Uh, that when he went back to US, it has become a huge news about, about the world, because he's some, somehow the, the very few uh, African American who went to U.S. and actually come back to you, actually, who African American who went to USSR and actually come back to U.S. after many many years later, yes. And those two people I talk about, they went to the USSR nearly at the same time. One is 1920s and one is 1930s. And they also they both went to USSR, but they have diff went they have undergo many different life. One. Uh, Carl Rothio, he became a composer and he's very successful and become the very important people in the uh, Korea local history. But Robert Robinson, he went to there to be a tool maker and work at a factory, but he undergoes many difficult events and uh, he, his life is very harsh. He, he nearly died at the war and he got back to America when he's, very, he's a little bit old at that time. The different life of different people went to the same place is very unique at that time. Thank you.